cow, you guys. I feel like that's been my Holy phrase cow. lately. We have Holy an exciting cow. episode, which I'm sure you know from the uh, title of this episode. But we have Em and Christine from And That's Why We Drink on the show. It's been years in the making. Yes. Years. Years and years and years. I know. We were so happy to actually meet them in person last summer in LA. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, well, we have to do something. And then they're they're busy bees. But they, we managed tour, to grab them. Yeah. Have they their snatched book. them. They have so much going on. Um, and so we're just so lucky that we got them for a yeah. full two hours to talk yes. ghost stories with us. You know what makes me laugh so much is that we had come up, and this is just some pretext or context for all of you before you listen to the episode, which we will play for you in just a moment. But we had come up with a whole idea of what the episode will be because we have – we. When we met them in person, we talked about how scary Waverly Hills Sanatorium is and how much it freaked us out and we were scared of it, but also really tempted and and drawn to it. So we were like, oh, let's talk about that and read stories from listeners from that place. And we just had so much to talk about. We had so many yeah, of our own Yeah, we quickly paranormal. abandoned <laughs> that We abandoned plan. that just like the sanatorium is abandoned because we had so much to talk about. They have so many ghost stories. We talked about our, you know, our journeys to a lucid dream and travel in the astral plane. It's a great episode. It's so much fun. It was so much fun. And if anyone is wondering what the app is called, the bird app that Christine talks about, which you'll hear, it is called Merlin Bird ID because she sent it to me after and I've been using it. <laughs> I got a road runner on it the other oh. day in Palm Springs. So exciting. Okay. Anyway, we had a blast with Em and Christine. Yes. And we know that you guys will be able to hear that. <laughs> so and I'll enjoy. also I'll also link Christine talked about a class that we are now gonna take. So I'll link that below as well. Um there's probably a bunch of other things we talked about. So if you have questions, let us know. Uh but enjoy. We love you. Yes. Four people, lots of ghosts. This is so exciting. We're finally doing this. I know. I'm stoked. I feel like we have talked to one another for so many years and then so many of our listeners, we have so many crossovers in terms of our listeners and they've been like, you guys got to get together with Em and Christine. And here we are. We're finally I remember it. when your podcast first came out, people kept tweeting us like, did you start another podcast? And we were like, I don't think <laughs> I so. Think, I think as our both of our logos are like Ouija board. Right, and so yeah. people thought that we came out with a people secret thought, spinoff and we were like, no, that's other people. M was a girl back then, so it made sense yeah. in their heads. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Oopsies. when you do spooky, we weren't, none of us here were super original with our logo, were we? We were like, no. it's spooky podcast, Ouija board. But it worked. <laughs> it, but worked. it worked. It worked. It worked, it worked twice, it worked. so. Yeah. It also, do you guys, in, do you guys like my merch? <gasps> Oh my I gosh. bought a sweatshirt. Oh <laughs> that's God. amazing. It's hard to see though, so I was like, "Oh man!" But uh, I but love it's my it. little Thank you. subtle it's, ghosty. Wow. Yeah, I like the monochrome stuff. That's why we we were like, "Let's I make love stuff it. that we actually will will wear." wear. Yes. <laughs> that's why everything we make has uh, glow in the dark because that's all M wears. So <laughs> yeah, I really am <laughs> really demanding. I'm like, if it's not tie dye or glow in the dark, I won't wear it. And then Christine's like, "We need." other clothes <laughs> like we'll other like one cool. we'll send you our tie-dye shirt yeah, <gasps> yeah. oh yeah. that'd be great oh my Do gosh you, yeah are you a big tie-dye tie-dye me oh yeah oh yeah i love tie-dye you should have you it's ever like, been to vermont my home state of vermont because no it's like well, all freaking tie-dye is there like a tie-dye museum or something <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's in tie-dye it's either tie-dye cool. or life is good shirts it feels and very everyone wears uh -huh. stocks and that's like mm -hmm. Oh, I'll do the Birkenstocks. It you sounds do the like everyone's gay. Hang on. Vermont well, yeah, feels... Yeah, it's Vermont. <laughs> yes. I mean... Duh. <laughs> they love the outdoors. They love okay. being gay. It's great. Great. Yeah. No, yes. I, I've been to Vermont, but I didn't... I wasn't primed to think of it as a tie-dye community, but now I'm I'm happy yeah, to will. go back. Yeah. No, you will. To be fair, that was, the last, that was the last place we went before COVID. So it's not... It's oh. a, We need a refresher because it was like a tough... It, it was like, oh, Vermont, we love it. And then COVID hit. So where I think we go? need like a new. Yeah. We did a show in Burlington. Uh, where, where, Burlington, yeah. Shut up. You did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shut up. Just like, shut up. Uh, I'm like mad. I'm like mad at myself for not. How, how far away is that from you? 15 minutes from my parents' house. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. it was like. at my haunted house. 
Ooh, we stayed at a haunted Airbnb, so would have been probably similar experience. Yeah, it was fucking creepy. Um, but we, it, I feel like that whole state is just haunted as fuck. It um, is. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> the whole it's East gay Coast. and haunted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My mom had actually reached out. I think when we were in when I when we, well, I guess we're all around the same age here. When we were in <laughs> uh, middle school, you guys are like in my childhood now with me. When all of us were together holding hands, <laughs> you <in> remember? School, <laughs> remember our homeroom? Uh, no. It was a good time. It was, but she had reached out to. It was some sort of it was like one of the big paranormal investigative groups in New England because our house at one point was so active. Stop it was it. like literally every 20 minutes something was happening. <gasps> and so oh we my were like, god. Oh, we should reach out. And they took probably about six months to actually get back to my mom. And my house my house my childhood home is haunted, but it's it's like Well, can I ebbs and flows. footnote footnote here? Your house is haunted because you and your family are haunted well it's not really the house perhaps could (laughs) could it be a combo i'm so glad i'm so glad that we're long distance friends Um, (laughs) (laughs) whoa (laughs) that sounds like a sounds like a lot uh wait uh, so can i ask what you specifically like what's your way or what was your way growing up in that house that you like made it tolerable like for yourself yeah like what would you do to like i know you guys just released like episodes about this that i've not listened yeah. to em so maybe we should actually listen to the episode <laughs> no that's to okay. learn well i think we i mean the short the short version is my mom always believed me and my brother whenever we saw oh, stuff that's she nice saw stuff too my dad was like taking the approach of if i tell them ghosts aren't real they won't be scared and it just didn't work my brother and i were very stubborn growing up so we we're like that's dumb of you for not being able to like you're so ignorant dad yeah yeah totally (laughs) so I think it was kind of like a little bit of camaraderie and then also we only had a few really scary experiences I think we just got sort of you get used to it yeah you do like you You see something out of the corner of your eye and you're just like oh and you just move on it's Mm. not (laughs) wild but I can't imagine I mean, like I had a, uh, I grew up in a house that had ghosts, but I don't know if you would call it haunted. It was more just like ghosts appeared often, and and then there would be wide patches where nothing was going on. So I would okay, say well, that's haunted. Yeah. Okay. Because I feel like that's yeah. the same thing that I experienced too. Like there'd be some punctuated moments of some really scary entities coming through, but that was like you know in the twenty five years my parents have owned the house, that was three mm. or four times. And otherwise, it was like, right. kinda, you know, the regulars that you just kind of like see in the same room <laughs> or the same mirror. I kind of feel like it's the bus station, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the bus stop. People yeah, come, your local commuters. people go. Yeah. <laughs> you have some <laughs> visitors here and there. Did you ever Did you ever name any of them? Or did you know the names of them? No. My mom named one of them. And I can't for the life of me remember who what his name was but it was this tall man he was Ugh. honestly he was like six foot seven i was like, i already Hello. hate it <laughs> no i was kind of like <laughs> <"Hello."> yeah, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> he was well dressed he was like tall <laughs> and handsome and he hung out in our dining room and there was one specific time when my family was coming back from a vacation and we were unloading all of our bags and we were walking through a mud room and he was he always hung out in the dining room and i whipped around really suddenly into the dining room to drop bags to go back out to the car and grab more stuff and he was there and we both looked at each other and we went <gasps> we spooked each other so oh my shut god up. Last did time you I think saw him, so. did you think it was like an intruder at first were you like oh my god someone's there or did you know right away that oh, it was a ghost i mean i don't even think i had time to think about if oh it was God. an intruder or not because he disappeared that quickly it was a split oh, experiences yeah. like that are so to me i'm I'm always so curious if it's just a glitch in timelines and yeah, that that man is living in your house in a different universe. And but he then, just loves you know, the dining room. He's yeah. like, you know, yeah. this is just where I hang always out. there. And then one day some future lady showed up and he was like, I just saw a ghost, you know, like maybe he yeah, saw yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. For the life of me, I don't know what, what the top, I know you won't know either Christine, maybe, but the, there was a topic we covered maybe a year ago where one house just happened to be sitting on essentially a glitch in the matrix because all the ghosts that they would see in the house were always, it was like they would 
time travel yes. into the future or the past and they would see other people in the house but they knew they weren't ghosts they knew they, they would were... like see a dinner party all of a sudden yeah and it would be like a oh. flash of it and then the people at the dinner party would like start would look at them, see them. Like, they would they would all see each other and it was clearly like they were crossing, crossing. timelines in some way of different people that who would so or already cool. did live there yeah Ooh. it was spooky did they ever this reminds me of that movie you've got mail remember that over there <laughs> 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 another beauty gem from our youth did yeah. they figure out who those people were like did they mm -mm. you know oh. i don't think so okay wait no they said that they what this is I, i'll, I'll, what I'll have <laughs> I'll of course we're never gonna remember so i want to warn you <laughs> Honestly, now not get to get it. your hopes up <laughs> but there was we one there was one guy who he lived there for a while and every time he saw ghosts there it was always the same family but they were always um like of an older time period or like a previous time period so he knew that if they were ghosts they were from they were people who just lived there before he did but then he had like one of those glitch in the matrix moments where he saw an older man staring at him and like who recognized him and then like 50 years later he was the older man and saw a younger That's version of him haunting the house and so okay ooh. actually that it's like is, haunting of hill house it's something like yeah. that that happened it was like he saw a man in his he saw a teenager he was a little kid he was running around his house this is a different story though it's like a different house it was on jim harold's campfire but he was running around his house as a kid and he saw a teenager in his kitchen making a sandwich and then the teenager like kind of looked over and they both made eye contact and then the guy just like disappeared and then as a teenager one day he was making a sandwich and he like saw something out of the corner of his eye looked over and saw himself as a little kid and went oh my god oh. like we just had a it like fulfilled all of those full circle <laughs> Mm. it is so wild Eek. and then it, yeah it my brain um it's it's so exciting that that can happen <laughs> but then my brain is like also so confused how does that happen that i can't spend too much i think time we just can't i know it hurt it starts to hurt up here yeah, your head. Totally. yeah. <laughs> yes. but then i mean the fact that it does happen it makes me wonder can we manipulate it to make it happen like could mm -hmm. i guess and do you think can anybody can we master it do you think anybody does and we just don't know you know what i mean like is somebody right. out there already Ooh. harnessing that power <laughs> I'm well, sure. we talked about recently about the ability to astral travel and <gasps> Patrick was saying, Patrick Hines from mm -hmm. True Crime Obsessed was saying that he, his mom had a friend who attended astral class in the astral plane. Shut and up. And then we got into a conversation about how there was a story of someone trying to astral project into Area 51 and there are astral security guards. Yeah. What? So people, people know things. Through. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, now I know Christine's going to go on like a heist tonight to Area 51 or something. I swear, I've been practicing lucid dreaming and I've been trying to get into astral projection. So, I, and I've been, got, I've gotten pretty good at lucid dreaming, which I know is very different, but it, you know, same kind of It's close, path. yeah. Yeah, so I've I've talked to Em a few times. You and I are on the same journey. Oh, good. Okay, we'll t text after. Well, um, you should yeah. you should do the thing that Christine and I have done, which is... Uh, I have a note hidden somewhere in my room, which I can't tell Christine about. But one day, she I'm hoping she finds it and reads it back to me in real and yeah, waking so life. Yeah, it's like our test. So one day I dreamt that I, and I was I was suddenly lucid and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to M's apartment. So I showed up and I was like, M, where's the note? And M was like, what note? And I was like, and so in my dream, <laughs> M was like, I don't close. know what note you're talking about. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, maybe you were an astral security guard. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah so. Or We're maybe trying. I'm in a different timeline. Who knows? Ooh, Being yeah. like, who are yeah, you? Maybe you accidentally jumped to a nearby timeline. The Emma <laughs> doesn't have the note. Wow. The like, <laughs> if, if we were all just like stoned right now, this would be, I, know. I, I would never... <laughs> I would never recover. <laughs> <laughs> My brain would explode. But I felt that way one time when someone said, this is going to sound so dumb now, but they were talking about, you know, like the brain obviously had to name itself. And someone was like <gasps> super high and they're like, do you think it meant to name itself Brian, but it was dyslexic? And I was like, whoa, maybe. Uh, that <laughs> would explain everything. <laughs> And <laughs> and just like that, I'm officially calling every problem that comes out of my head Brian's problem. Brian's so, yes, problem. Brian's that sounds, problem. That sounds like a Hallmark original movie. It does. Brian's like, problem. Off podcast. Life, life with Brian. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's Brian. also like Inside Out too. 
yeah. Inside Out 2, Life with Brian. I mean, it's like a, oh God, it's We've written it for them. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Wait, Christine, I have a, I have a question with your, with your mission to astral project <laughs> and your, yes. your lucid dreaming. Have you asked anyone in your dream if you're dreaming? Have you tried that yes. sort of thing? What yes. has happened? And it is, okay, so it, it's really trippy because I'll be in a dream and I'll see somebody that I don't know because they're just like a dream figure and I'll say hey guess what I'm dreaming right now and they'll be like I'm sorry do I know you like they act at least in my dream they act like a stranger would if you just walked up to them we're like hey I'm dreaming and they're like what the hell like so realistic and creepy and it's always someone like I don't recognize so for a minute I'm like this does feel like I'm just approaching a random person in the street and shouting at them what if you are what if (gasps) <gasps> that what if that person really exists and they're dreaming as well and they wake up the next morning and like I had the weirdest experience oh well I hope they're okay because I kept I kept smacking him on the head because he was bald and I was like see I can do whatever I want because I'm dreaming and I kept smacking him on the head so he that must man, have had not a good experience yeah he woke, woke up, up with, with a headache a, a brand new insecurity yeah and probably like a bruise on his head because I was like smacking him but yeah it was it's pretty weird you're like it feels like your brain is kind of projecting people who are like how you would imagine the actual interaction would go so it's it's bizarre have you either of you done that too yeah so people on our show have heard this i've i haven't really done lucid dreaming but i have astral projected (gasps) a couple times the first one is like there's an experience with my sister where i saw these like orbs fighting over her when i was four and i think i might have been astral projecting and seeing the experience in the astral plane but then a couple of years ago, after we had started this podcast, I had a full astral projection experience where I was, I saw myself sleeping. I <gasps> walked into my living room. I had a full on conversation with a, a spirit guide of some sort talking about my life and my capabilities. And then I started walking through my hallways of my apartment building. And then all of a sudden in my physical body, a, a voice whispered, wake up. And I felt myself <gasps> spring back into my body and horror movie like sit Ooh, up like gasp and, of air yeah oh, yeah oh, oh my god whoa um, I've heard I've heard wake up in, in my head but I didn't know where it was coming from and it did work out very well though like it a was minute probably later, Brian because <laughs> my alarm <laughs> clock went off right away afterwards but I've I've never had like a I've had a w- uh, one conversation where I've also seen on TikTok the like you know don't ask you know there are rules when you're when to, when you're talking to people who are in your dream world and don't ask right. them so i had a dream where like my mom was i just like as the two of you probably know but christine and i have you know a bit of a morbid job very similar to yours and it might alter <laughs> the way that you dream sometimes and you have really fucked yeah. up dreams um Definitely. i was having a dream that like my mom had died and then i oh. had um And then I saw her in the next dream. And when I asked her, I was like, are you alive? She stared at me and kind of kept going like, "Eh, well, I can't like was like dodging the question. And I was like, girl, are you good? Are you here? Are you good? And and the whole time she like kept saying like, well, why don't you like look at this tree over here? And like, oh, well, look at this. And and so at some point I was like, are you even here? Is this real or am I dreaming? And then all of a sudden her face started twisting (gasps) and she was. And she was like, I think we're done here. And then she just tried to leave the room. And I was like, I think we're done here. I was like, I think we're done here. Yeah. (laughs) If ever there's proof of us living in a simulation, I feel like this is exactly like that. It starts literally glitching. It was the and it was like the face twisted and the voice was warping. It was like in a horror movie. And it was like, I think we're done here. And I was like, oh I so badly wish there was some invention that could take that dream and just display it for all of us to see because I, I can visualize it that. so perfect but yeah. I just want to actually see it like a yeah. VR almost you like you yeah. know if you've yeah. ever done VR it's like you feel like it's real can you imagine if Oculus came out with an app where you can live in your <laughs> worst nightmares <laughs> honestly oh that is not what I would sign up to test I would wait for I everyone would. else to do it yeah you would and then I'd wait for you to tell You'd me about to, it you have to pay like a $25 monthly membership to like have the worst <laughs> things come to life <laughs> I think yeah. I think the coolest like because I really want to ask. So you didn't intentionally astral travel, right? Like didn't. it just happened. So, yeah, and I, and yeah. it scared me. So I haven't since then. That, I was gonna ask like, do you feel like you were freaked out, and so it's kind of like blocked? 
Yeah, but I've been trying to tap back into it because I think if I can understand it and practice it and know how to control it, I'll feel a lot more comfortable with it. But it's how do you get to that point? I okay, don't know. <laughs> I found a cool course online about it that I've been like dragging okay. my feet trying to take, because, but I've heard really good things about it. And it's basically, I think you start with like lucid dreaming stuff and it like builds into like you have more control over your subconscious. I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay, please. I also heard mugwort is good oh. to like take before you go to sleep. Oh. I've heard that too. Yeah, because I think it like... uh activates certain I don't know yeah. dream chemicals science. Yeah. <laughs> you know science, science. Stuff. yeah I think I, I don't know I really want to astral travel I will say the cool I think I mean M knows this but I think the coolest lucid dream I had was I was in my neighborhood and here in Kentucky and uh it's like really old and it was considered like the Las Vegas of the like of the east coast <laughs> midwest like back you know when the mobsters ran the town um, and so I am like obsessed with hi- history and the history of the house I live in from like the 1860s and the history of the neighborhood. So, cool. so I had this dream and I was like, oh my God, I'm lucid. And so I said, I walked outside and I said, I want to see my neighborhood, Newport, Kentucky in, or my town in the, like, I think I said like 1860s or something. And it was like in, I, um, what's it called? Uh, what's the dream movie that I love? Inception. <laughs> oh, oh. I keep, I keep saying insidious. Inception. 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 I almost said insidious and I was like, that's yeah. not right. It's not quite the same vibe. Um, but yeah, it was like everything kind of like reformatted. And it was like I was walking on cobblestone. There were people like the old butcher shop. It was the creepiest and weirdest. Real. So it was cool. so cool. And I walked up to a wall and was like, oh, my God, like it literally feels like you're touching a brick wall, which now I'm convinced everything in our reality is just like our like projections of our own it's you know, bullshit. Because yeah. if know, a dream like can feel so real, like my reality yeah. right now. Ooh. Well, Christine, tell, do the hand thing. Tell them the hand thing. Oh, yeah. So if you like a lucid dreaming hot tip, I don't know if you know this, but um, one thing throughout your normal day to day to get you into the lucid dreaming mode is um, you're supposed to question your reality. And so the idea is like anytime you think of it or some people do like anytime you walk down the stairs or anytime you go through a doorway or but anytime anything feels maybe odd, even just in a normal day to day, um, you start to like think, am I dreaming? And I mean, obviously, most of the time the answer is no. But then one time it'll be yes. And you'll be like, oh, and it'll like jar you into being conscious in your dream. And one of the tests, which <laughs> sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, is that you're supposed to put your like try to put your finger through your palm. And it, the idea is like, am I dreaming? Like if I'm dreaming, I should be able to just like stick my finger through my palm. And one time I realized, I, so I do this all the time during the day as just like a habit. And then one it, day, it's very it, obnoxious because anytime I'm trying to like, I I'm often a little unhinged. And anytime, <laughs> no. anytime Christine like is every time I'm trying to tell Christine a story or show her something I think is really cool, I just see her doing this, being like, "Is this real?" Because <laughs> sometimes you say such unhinged things that I'm like, "This can't be real life." It's like this and has to be a dream, and so she's starting to I mean. Is. What if we are someone else's dream? What if ah! our reality is the dream of our another version of ourselves? I'm so glad I'm not on drugs. <laughs> I'm <so scared. laughs> kind of the thing that is that's so trippy too because I I'm going to start using this because I I have found myself in some moments where I'm like slipping into derealization and I'm like, yes, is this mental illness or are we unlocking something? <laughs> Honestly, like, a little bit I of both. Have no both? idea. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah, what if we're just told it's this, but it's that. Like, it's, I'm just always questioning everything and feel so a little bit unhinged. Just like do other people M think said. this way? I don't know. I'm so glad that the four of us do because I, I always feel like maybe we're just living in our own little planet. But I'm glad. Um, I like this are... planet. Yeah. I will I say, what was I going to show you? Oh, I was going to tell you about the, oh, whatever. I don't know. Apparently, uh, I one time did try the finger thing. Um, but I knew that I was dreaming. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to stick my finger through this wall and that'll like prove it. (laughs) But, uh, when I tried it, it wouldn't work. And I was like, oh my God, my brain is like trying to convince me this isn't real. And so I was like, it's, I was like, I swear to God, I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. Like, let me, I don't know, rule over the physics of this world. And then all of a sudden this voice like came over the PA system and said, like, I wrote it down somewhere, but it was like the creepiest sentence. It was like this voice that came, maybe it was Brian, I don't know, but it like came from above. And it basically said like, uh, we are now ready for you to begin experiencing this or like some <gasps> creepy like video game line. And then all of a sudden Aliens. I was like, 
in the dream like properly and i was like ew Whoa. this makes <laughs> me think that? of the sims like do our sims <gasps> have these same conversations in their little pools while they're drowning Hossa together Hossa 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 Hossa. Yeah. <laughs> they're like <laughs> and out of nowhere like i try to touch my hand through my finger through my hand and like a diving board got pulled out of the pool and i started floundering. <laughs> everything was on like, fire yeah. and there was a baby crying in the other room i but suddenly my neighbor and my babies. husband were having sex <laughs> The, the ladder is removed from the pool and you're just stuck <laughs> drowning. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then my refrigerator was gone. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, that I do wonder. Kind of like life. I, I mean, if I we're guess. some, if we're a simulation, I wonder how, are we like one of the higher up simulations or are we like down, like scourge, like bottom of the barrel simulation? And like we're draft one. Yeah, oh, no. and, and that's why there's so many random glitches because like we're, mm. we were like the guinea pig rounds, you know. One thing I've heard is that we, the glitches are just increasing or we're starting to notice them because we're like advancing. And mm. so it's almost oh. like as we Leveling get- Leveling up. Yeah, as we level <laughs> up and like start to understand the concept of a simulation, we're starting to notice those things, which makes me worry they're just going to like pull the plug and be like, all right, we're done with these guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't they're know. becoming too aware. Too <laughs> aware, yeah. What do they want from us, though? Like, what is, I don't what know. is the end result of us being aware? I also I feel know. like this is if there were to be a cult, if we were to create a cult, this would be our end of days theory. And we shall. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just picture the four of us on a little rocket ship, like from the Jimmy Neutron movie, just like pausing <laughs> on different moons and looking up at the love stars me. and talking about this stuff. <laughs> I love the idea that we're going to start a cult, but like probably no one will join us. So it'll be just the four of us in the cult. Like, no, join our cult. No. I have said Corinne would be a great cult leader. And I believe she it. just has the, I too. the I aura myself of, of things, leader. which is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. But that is probably one of the number one things you need as a cult leader, right? Is delusion. You just got to believe it, baby. Delusion. You just believe. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, I think, I think uh, combined at least, what isn't one of the big things of a cult leader is like they have to have like the charisma, like the X factor. Oh, yeah. I feel like all of us can swindle different people and like really just build the we, build the we group pretty all big. all have our strengths when it comes to narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's Probably. the thing it's an I, 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 um, but we make no money we just, <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i could swindle very much i think i would be just following all of you you'd like be a little, swindled like, by the three dog. of us yeah <laughs> <laughs> we would just swindle you you're the yeah. only cult me in. member the three of us oh that's right we run the cult you're just kind of <laughs> you're the lackey i don't know what the what the word is <laughs> these the days Aaron gal you're maybe at the I, bottom of the pyramid of the pyramid scheme. But you're um, the one but you're the one that bridges the other people us with up. us. You right. you're the glue mm. that some sort of MLM yeah. phrase about how you build. Well, I the guess base if we're yes. if there's a three of us here and then Sabrina's at the bottom, this is like reverse Illuminati, right? Oh shit. That's the beginning of it all, <laughs> That's yeah. Right. That's right. It's beginning and the end of all of it for sure. Yeah. Yes. This is actually a hypnosis episode, and we're putting everyone into a trance. And if you're watching I feel like on I'm YouTube, in a trance. you're too far gone. If you play it, if you play it backwards, there's a different <laughs> message. <laughs> I kind of actually believe that. <laughs> like I do wonder if, in. if you anyone ever played one of our episodes backwards, if it says anything interesting at all. Somebody try it out. Do we still get downloads for that? That's what I don't I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine you if we did our listened? ads backwards? <laughs> Oh, the oh, ads, God. yeah. Have you guys listened <laughs> yeah. to your episodes before on 0.5 speed? I don't want to do that. They're hilarious. <laughs> They're so Wait, good. really? It's you just, so funny. You just I have not done it. So drunk. And it's Our episodes so or like no, every No, episode. just any part any. of everyone. Okay, yes. I was like, yeah, have I think you been doing conversational. This? I think oh, conversational good. podcasts just sound drunk. I've heard us sped up before because a lot of people, I guess, just want to get through it. Um, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But but I haven't heard a slower. I've never heard a single person say, I want to hear this for longer. So I also, <laughs> like, often, I often am drunk. Not, dr I mean, you know, at least I tipsy. I used to be when we record. So slowing that down, I'm like, that's going to be a wild ride. Yeah, Christine already <laughs> already was in 0.5 speed. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> there was one episode. I'm just going to bring it out because I just love to shame you oh, on it, Christine. Stop. But there was <laughs> one episode where Christine literally fell asleep while we were recording it's so embarrassing <laughs> and i feel like so that one like i was telling my story and christine all of a sudden was like uh-huh 
interesting wow and like couldn't be more <laughs> hurtful and uh <laughs> We and were like sitting a- together too. It was like not like over Zoom. Like we were at the same oh, table, no. and all of a sudden, like so, one I was of my- watching her and like in real time. Her whole she was just like kind of nodding off, and I was like, "You okay?" Oh. And she was like, "Yeah, I'm good. I'm we're fine. This is I'm a great fine. story." And then eventually, she was just <laughs> I was telling my story. And I looked up, and she was just <laughs> out, <laughs> out. And I remember waking her up and you can hear in the episode after she fell asleep there's an ad and then you hear good morning it's tomorrow and <laughs> <laughs> we just couldn't we couldn't we couldn't do it um, okay, anyway yeah, that um, was probably upset anymore when christine goes like this because at least yeah, yeah. she's keeping herself awake <laughs> that's a I'm good trying. point okay but were you really really tired or was, or was the story voice bad? so soothing which oh. is a compliment thank you option three i hadn't thought of that one uh option four which is i had been drinking a lot i was miserably exhausted and am so soothing that i could <laughs> the, <help combo>. <laughs> yeah. the combo yeah, platter a familiar comforting voice who needs yeah. mugwort Christine or whatever i got yeah <laughs> thank you i'm so the, what a what a nice spin to that of like yeah, oh i, I just it. i, I should have thought sorry. of that sooner it would have been cool if Christine had fallen asleep and then started astral projecting during the now, recording. Now that no, would have blown my mind. Then I could have flipped <laughs> you in the head from behind. Yeah. I'd have been like, Christine, are you okay? How? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you know, there was a ghost um, at Christine's old place where she fell asleep. The Walter. <laughs> you know, but, the um, one where she fell asleep. You know, that that place. Um, she had a ghost there and now she's got a different ghost at this new house since she's moved. And I thought this Walter would. This is a great would... segue. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably not. We want to hear all your ghost stories. Oh, great. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's a. For a second, I thought you were like, you know, kind of, you know, like Christine right before she fell asleep. She's like, no, this is great. Keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, there was there was a ghost at her old house. We played with a Ouija board, and uh, <gasps> you did. Oops. His, that was Christine's doing. I'm very anti Ouija board, and sometimes in a moment of, you weakness. know, a moment of weakness, Christine will convince me. How? So Christine, You're the ghost hunter. hunter. I'm, I, I, I know. Em hates it. I'm, I'm, I'm just very convincing. You're the cult leader. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I've, I've seen one catch on fire, by itself. <gasps> Where? During a paranormal uh, investigation? No, just during, just in using one in a really haunted house. It just, I hate that so i really am so not into using them and but so i've always told christine like if we are going to use it it's not going to be on my fucking house and so christine wanted to use one and i was like okay well we're at your place so i guess we can do it and um luckily only one ghost came through named walter who has a dog named gabe his favorite food is gin and <laughs> um Same. i like him <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he was a good guy. Uh, but then now there's now there's a new person uh, at Christine's new place, and I don't know how I feel. I haven't been at your house long enough to make an opinion. But what yeah, do you think of him? I don't. I don't either. I almost feel like this is all a very new territory. So like you guys are some of the first to be hearing this because we moved in. A couple weird things happened, but it didn't feel super haunted. Except there's like one part of the house where we just know not to like look at night you know when you feel like oh if i look there's like your guy in the dining room like if i glance over there there's gonna be somebody like that feeling of like we'll just avoid eye contact yeah Yeah, just blinders live in blind ignorance and so my and my husband too who doesn't really believe in any of this literally refuses to go into that part of the house once it's dark and like is terrified of his own office at night so you know we could all make assumptions from there on what yep. he really believes but uh there's this maybe he just really doesn't want to work and he's like oh i'm so scared oh it's so scary up there <laughs> <laughs> let's watch tv instead great yeah. excuse yeah. wait a second um but so i talked to a medium recently that em had recommended and i just kind of on a whim asked like do you sense anything like from my house um because we were over zoom and she was like all i sense is that there's like this area where this one guy is and like he minds his own business and he's kind of just uh on a loop and he's just reliving his time from the like 1920s 1930s and he's just like coming home from work and he has his little jacket over shoulder and he's just clomping around and like you know at night it's just like he keeps replaying this cycle and she i said do you have a name or anything she's like i don't know i'm not great at names but the name that immediately came to mind and she's like i wouldn't say this if i didn't know but the name that came to mind was harry and i was like okay um and so you know whatever we left the conversation and then 
like shortly after that I started getting really into uh, like newspapers.com ancestry like I'm just I, I don't know looking up it's the so house. fun to go into it's yeah. so fun like, it's the perk of having that. an old home right you get yeah all the history. it's so fun and so I was, exactly so I was like looking up the address like in different newspapers and stuff and um they were like oh uh so the person who lived here in the 1920s his name was harry i'm not gonna say the name because it's gonna yeah. <laughs> immediately pinpoint um but <laughs> yeah address. his name's yeah i'm like <laughs> at blank but yeah so he it was like oh his name's harry he lived here for like several decades and died in the house and i was like oh my god she was wow. right that is so, so wild i think harry just kind of stomps around i don't think he's like dangerous or anything yeah um so but no I, talk about his um how he gets confused sometimes oh yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, poor harry Wait, so poor the way harry. she described it was like he comes home from work and he has he's like kind of just playing a loop but he has these moments where he's like wait a second like where's my like my stuff got moved around or like he kind of gets a glimpse of like Oh, like a timeline are... crossover thing. Yeah, where like yeah. things are not. Where's all my shit? Where they're supposed to be, or like someone else messed something up, so he gets like frustrated. And she's like, he just kind of keeps replaying this, and it makes sense because at night is like when it's dark is the only time that we ever feel anything. And uh, she was like, oh, he's just coming home from work, like on a loop, wow. and like is kind of like, what's wow. going on here? This is um, the movie, The I'm... Others. Mm -hmm. well. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I don't know that movie. I'm scared of it. I'm oh, why? It. It's no, one of my favorites. It's, it's so, so good. good. And Nicole Kidman is great. Come I on. know. Oh, fine, you've convinced me. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Maybe you're a cult leader too. You can, you can watch it with Harry. The two I know. Of you can be like, I want to explain what's happening to you, and I think this oh. movie will help you understand. He's gonna be like, what is this big box with people in it? Like, oh right, right. You're that just more confused. Pictures, Harry, even you know, more confused. Stars. <laughs> it's like the talkies are in my house yeah so I, maybe he'll reincarnate then if he's like oh i could be yeah that's yeah, it that yeah. seems fun i'll move on he'll yeah be maybe stars guard or something i don't know oh that is so I, uh, wild. this is reminding me a little bit so i wish so badly i still had the photo i don't have it but my freshman year of college my friend brianna who lives in chicago she had shared with me a photo and she's like so scared of ghosts like she's terrified won't listen to anything scary won't watch any like a, a disney does she listen to your movie podcast that's... no no okay mm -hmm. but she we have friends all... like that yeah who are like i support you but from exactly <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. so proud of you you have no idea what i do <laughs> <laughs> but thank you but thank you but she had a ghost photo that her friend one of her best friends from high school had been babysitting at this house i think it was still in illinois the outskirts of chicago was babysitting this little girl and it was maybe she was like seven or eight and it was an only child and she lived in this house and her parents were gone on on a date night and so this friend was babysitting this little girl and brianna's friend takes a picture of the little girl of them hanging out takes a couple pictures and in the background of one, you can see a man in a suit with a briefcase walking through the door frame. No, and she saw this photo get it. No, and she no. was like, holy shit, there's an intruder. Sure. So she and she got like real like, I'm going to protect this little girl. Like, you can't just be in this house. What wow. the fuck? And she went and she looked through the entire house. She called the parents. She even asked the little girl like, oh, do you ever, like, does anyone else come here? You know, was totally trying to investigate, like, holy crap, are we in danger here? Is someone A in the A real house? person. Yeah. When the parents finally came back home and then she got to leave the babysitting gig, she talked to them a little bit more about what she had seen. And they were like, oh, yeah, our house is, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of activity we think that happens. And so we're looking at this photo, all of us in this college dorm room, like shitting ourselves over mm -hmm. this very <laughs> clear ghost picture. And I'm zooming yeah. in. And then I go... Who's at the stove? And there's another <gasps> Stop ghost it. that you couldn't see because it was so, the guy was so clear that you immediately looked to That him. you're distracted. Yeah. At the stove was this woman with her hair up and she was in like a grout fit and like part of her head was grout gone. Fit. So she like, <laughs> yeah, she was like in a gray sweatsuit. And so like this part of her face or her head, it was the back of her head, but it was like very, very misty. Like it, right. it, I want to say headless, but you could pick out some I of want the to see this features. so bad. Me too. I have texted 
I have texted Brianna probably every other year. I say, can you please try to find that ghost Just photo? Try. And she, was it like on a digital camera? It. No, it was oh. it was sent to her on a cell phone, but I don't think she's in touch with that friend anymore. Oh, it's these and it was old just, cell phones, like we I just know. lose all the content. <sighs> yeah, but I mean, our theory was similar to what you were saying, Christine, with this man going through the loop of life. Mm. We were like, maybe they're just going through, like he's leaving for work in the morning and she's cooking breakfast because that's <gasps> exactly what it looks yeah. like in the photo. Ooh, that's just okay. amazing. You know, that makes so much sense. You know sense. what this reminds me of is, and also a great segue, Tom Halstead, who's a photographer, took like a bunch of photos of ghosts and or caught them on camera. One of them is like in a basement and it's a man with a briefcase. He also caught a photo of Mary Lee at Waverly Hills. <gasps> dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. And we covered oh it in God. episode three of our podcast, so like early, early days. And that's when we first heard about Waverly Hills. Yeah. And I feel like we have bonded over our fear of Waverly yes. Hills. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. We also, we covered it really early too. We covered it, was it in a long episode 20 or something. Yeah. And, yeah. But I remember it being the one, it has like the cr- the crawler or the, the creeper, creeper or something. The creeper. The creeper. I will oh. never forget. It's so I remember creepy. that. I remember telling that story and being like, I think this the story is going to be a humdinger. Like this, <laughs> I, I've never once ever covered something with a creeper in it where it's just like, it's apparently no the creeper good. is like this big, like 10 foot shadow figure spider thing that crawls all over people or chases you down the hall or something. It, that the it, yeah. other ghosts are scared of. Yeah, that's yeah. what Ooh. that's what upsets me is like it, yeah. it. Ups, it like scares the other ghosts. And I'm like, right. well, that shouldn't be that. Shouldn't I mean, be the right. fact that no, no investigators have literally caught evps of other spirits warning the investigators of the creeper coming like basically saying like go he's run he's coming it's coming oh my you know god i mean i assume i would kind of assume it's some sort of demonic entity that's kind of like feeding on the spirits absorbing that, are, that remain there but em, i want to know if you have any theories because you're the one that has paranormal Me? investigative yeah, you're the expert like, Who, me? in this group. <laughs> and also, Christine, how far are you from Waverly Hills? Mm. Like two hours, I think. Oh, like, that's, really a, that's a day Driving. trip, my friend. That's a day trip. Oh, trust me. I'm waiting. Somebody show up here and we'll go. <laughs> um, I got the play. Uh, let's, go. let's go. So uh, thank you for calling me the paranormal expert of the four, which is like, <laughs> uh, sure, I'll let you believe that. Um, I but I, I, uh the weird thing, by the way, about becoming a, a ghost hunter, I, I was a ghost hunter for three years in college, which was a lovely college gig. But one of the first things that you learn is that most people who are like ghost hunting, they're all like really intense intellectual scientists who are there t- not to catch ghosts, but to debunk whatever people think are hauntings. Yeah. Oh. And so I showed up like a real asshole on the first day and I was like, <laughs> we're going to get ghosts. And everyone was like, no, like we have like <laughs> blueprints of the building and we're going to look at the power lines. And I was like, oh. you take your fanny pack <laughs> oh, off man. with your Scooby snacks. You're like, never yeah. mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then for three years, I was always like, just the hopeful ghostbuster uh, amongst Aww. like a bunch of like scientists who are like, I guess, Em, if you want to go in the attic by yourself, go for it. Um, <laughs> that's brave. But, so that's the closest to expert I have. Um, <laughs> but from what I heard around me when I was ghost hunting uh, <laughs> is that, I mean, I've, I've heard the, the theory a lot that there's a difference between spirits and demons where, you know, spirits are just people from our realm who've passed on, but then there's some other unearthly creatures so i wouldn't be i think you're totally spot on that i feel like that happens to be demonic feeding off of human energy or soul energy something it Mm -hmm. never had i mean again Mm -hmm. totally just guessing here but i would guess if even spirits who can communicate with us are scared of it then it's not even of their world so i also yeah like what it because there's so much tragedy and death that occurred at Waverly hills that I I could believe that all of that energy just formed into this mm. darkness. That oh, is not yeah. even a demon or a spirit. It is just a, a ball of energy that is so intense and dark. It's just like create it, like yeah. manifesting yeah. out of all of that. Yeah, like a that's black a hole. great point. That's a great point. But what's also creepy is that, you know, unlike the the man in your house, Christine, or or some of the other ghosts that I'm, I'm sure you've experienced and we've experienced in our childhood homes that don't seem to know what's 
necessarily going mm. on like this is a very intelligent haunting everything yeah. at waverly hills seems to know that it's there i mean maybe some are confused and don't understand exactly mm-hmm. what's happening and are caught in some sort of glitch but otherwise they know that there's danger they know that there's something dark happening they're there. like and they know that like if they're warning live people about this thing they like know that we're alive they're not uh, to some degree anyway right. yeah 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 it is I, so I, creepy i do wonder i mean this could be quite a tangent so i'll try to keep it concise but like <laughs> i i do wonder why do some people pass on and others don't is it a choice or did you deal with too much that you're like stuck here for some reason but then that feels unfair because you probably didn't deserve whatever happened that's keeping you here and but so it and then of all the spirits or entities that are still within communication access to us or within communication range how come only some of them seem to know what's going on and some of them don't i just feel like there's so many fragmented worlds and like i don't know how you get stuck in one and not the other so i have no idea we've been talking recently what if because we're en- we're made of energy right if if you believe that the soul is energy could your energy once you pass on split like can part mm, of you part of you still be left behind but the rest of you is reincarnated okay or can i i, I watch s- a lot of ghost shows i'm not an yeah. expert like M, but i watch a <laughs> lot of go- a lot like a lot a lot um and i have heard that that that's possible that sometimes part yeah. of you stays behind and like just in a limited capacity like either replays stuff or just sticks around for yeah. some reason so i think that's i mean according to my <laughs> research <laughs> on the discovery plus app i have uh, it's according to like Zach shadow work. people yeah. are talking i mean corinne you were the one who introduced me to this but the idea of going into the pair like you know whatever plane it is and collecting the pieces mm. of you that have Yes. Kind of yes. So I have a part. Uh, one of my coworkers from a previous job. She is super into all of this. Super in tune. Can read people. Like if she were to tap into your energy, she doesn't because of the ethics of it. But like she could tap into anybody and see exactly like what their trauma is, all of their emotions, <gasps> know a lot about wow. them. She's super super powerful. But she has. She's always working on on her power and her abilities and one of the things she does is she teams up with um, therapists and and psychologists and helps them treat certain patients that can't seem that kind of like hit a roadblock when it comes to certain Mm. traumas and certain phobias and she goes into her astral body into the astral plane and finds these broken off fragments of these people's souls and helps Mm. bring them back to the current living conscious person and then that person can then work through whatever they need to work through with that Wait, piece I, reattached to them. I want their number. <laughs> That's amazing. Right? I know, right? Sick. I know. Can they help me figure out my fear phobia of telephones? Because no hypnotherapist has been, has been able to solve it. Maybe this oh, is her. Maybe. Is it a past yeah. life thing? Have you done a past I, life I, regression? No. And I tried to the other day. And the woman was like, oh, I don't. And whatever. It doesn't matter. But no, I. I feel like I keep getting like cut off anytime I'm trying to like figure it out, but it might be, I, I don't know what it is. I can't, can't quite put my finger yeah. on Yeah. Well, I'll let you know. I'm taking a ancestral trauma class with her. That. So is cool. that's so I'll badass. I'll tell you what I learn and then maybe Please? we can tap yeah. into, tap into Let's it. Let's do it. Isn't it freaky? I've always wanted to like start either, a, I know podcast is probably not the right way to do it, but, and the YouTube channel is like way too much probably work, but. I've always had this idea like I would love to either watch somebody or create a show where like they just do these different things like they mm-hmm. do a past life regression and you get to like watch or witness this yes. happen or they do like I'd love somebody who just kind of gets to touch on all these different things or like they go get tarot readings and you get to follow yeah along. I don't know I just think yeah. it's, no, it's kind of like the goop show oh <laughs> yeah that's true it is yeah, yeah. that's true talk about a cult Oops. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Um. Do either of you have like any like? Have you been to Waverly Hills or do you just have like a, a just personal an obsession? Obsession. So okay. No, so interesting obsession. because I don't know if you feel this way, but when we first started talking about it, we were horrified. We were just so scared of it. We were like, absolutely not. We're never going to go there. That's the top of our list of don't oh. go to, not to go to list. But then as we've continued the podcast. 
it has just gotten stuck in our mind. Oh no. And we feel drawn to it now. Oh no. And we've gotten yeah. to a point where we're like, is it calling us? Um, it feels like an attachment or something. Yeah. Or yeah. Like, yeah. That's what I would think in my head. I'd be like, why do I have this weird fixation on this thing? And it's so strange too, because we've listened back to that episode of our podcast because we did it very early on. Like my microphone sounds horrible. I <laughs> said yeah, five like the of the 35 facts I should have said yeah, in we the know research. What that's like. you know? <laughs> yeah. Like it wasn't good. So we were like, why has it stuck with us? Like, why weird. is it so tethered to it's both of us now? You but know, well, it's so weird because M covered it like, I mean, again, like 2017, that would have been. So I'm not great at math, but like what, five and a half years ago, something like that. And um, I like barely remember it. Like, I really don't know much about it at all from from just memory um i remember the fucking creeper guy because yeah, that's yes. hard to forget how do you forget um, that yeah there's i know <laughs> doppelgangers people have seen so ghost oh. adventures went and they saw i don't remember who saw you have my attention but... what did zach bagans do <laughs> zach did he see a doppelganger of himself because i can't take two of them no i think aaron saw a doppelganger of someone else in the group ew. i can't remember exactly ew, 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 what it was scary. but there's the doppelgangers and they'll like call out to you and also <laughs> People have, here's what freaks me out about Waverly Hills too, is that normally when you talk about shadow people, they exist kind of within dark hallways and kind of like on walls, you know, like they seem like shadows because they're in places where shadows typically are. Right. But at Waverly Hills, they go around the property. So you might just see a dark figure in a empty field. And that Absolutely freaks not. me out. That you can just be walking on the outside being like, okay, I'm generally safe. And I'm then free, something could dart right. by you. <gasps> there was a, oh God, there was, I, oh, I'm thinking of the Alamo. The Alamo is the same where there are ghosts that are attached. Because there are like ghosts of soldiers who are miles from the Alamo. But people will still drive by at night and they'll see someone walking like with a limp or like he, he like something's wrong and they've rolled down the window and been like do you need help and he's like i'm just trying to get to the alamo and it's and it's a guy in like Ugh. an old military <laughs> uniform and it's uh but it's definitely like the perimeter is much farther than you think in terms of like what do you think yeah. it's like just drawing people in like spirits i mean in like i don't well, know i think that guy he's he seemed to be like um on replay and he was Props? he's been seen He's been seen by whoever. a few people. Yeah. But, uh, Props but to whoever all... pulled over, because if I Forget saw it. someone on the side of the road in the middle of the night, I yeah. am... A man? No yeah. thanks. I'm not yeah. stopping. No. <laughs> in the bright sunshine, I'd be like, wow, that sucks that you're walking on the side of the road, and I'd keep it moving. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, he, apparently a bunch of people have seen this guy, and he always looks like he's in like a military uniform. And I guess wow. he ended up... Um, there was some story to him where he was supposed to go to his post that day at the Alamo and everyone died and he didn't go. So now out of guilt, his ghost keeps trying to return oh. to fight with his Survivor oh, gosh, group. That's horrible. Something oh. like that. But um, they've done research on that guy, but there are other ghosts where people will just like, they're clearly walking towards the Alamo. They're leaving the Alamo. They, I don't know, are supposed to work for the Alamo and it, it, there's just ghosts all around it and much yeah. further than you'd think. So I don't Ooh, know if that's, that's so interesting. If it's, that it's like a little vortex that just keeps everybody there. I imagine um, like the more darkness that's happened at a place or maybe uh, maybe a, a place that had a lot of people and trauma happened to all those people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are places that, you know, it, it reaches further in terms of activity. Like I'm not surprised in, you know, quote, insane asylum or a penitentiary or the Alamo, you know, that a lot of people died at those places. So I guess the the range is wider. I don't know. This is kind of yeah. making me think of WandaVision a bit. Like, <gasps> oh, boy. <laughs> Scarlet Christine, Witch, you, you, know? you may leave. <laughs> <laughs> but just the fact, you know, like she put that whole trance over and like that whole community, that whole town was under her control and kept there. It makes me mm -hmm. wonder if there's some sort of thing that we don't see that's keeping everybody everybody's souls there too oh no maybe it's that creeper it could be i've it heard be. of like bad uh entities like uh who who trap like they yeah um, one of the shows i watched they talk about 
entities like that as collectors which is so creepy like yes. they're collecting souls mm. and like it makes me them? think of ghost whisperer did you yes. ever watch that show yes yes yeah good times <laughs> love I, it. Uh, I love so ghost good. whisperer and medium Both you know so good shows. so we don't have i don't know if we have a do we have a fascination about any particular location mm. i was gonna say the one place that we that christine's had a weird connection to is um, for those who don't know, when we go on tour, our format is that we have gone on a paranormal investigation and the tour that we do is we show the content that we of evidence that we get. Um, and spoiler alert for our current tour, we were supposed to go to a previous location. W- am I allowed to say where, Christine? Yeah, is that- of course. Listen, we I'm were- always on the air. Uh, I air on the side of tell everybody everything. So <laughs> to your discretion. <laughs> so, uh, well, we can't we're not going to say where we where our current show's content came from because that's a pun surprise from people come and see where we actually went but we were originally going to go to bobby mackey's and uh (gasps) and christine like only like 10 minutes down the road and the reason one of the reasons we picked it is like oh so uh, em and eva will just have to fly to cincinnati um because i have you know and a kid now so i'm like oh it's so much easier if you just fly here uh right you know stay the night we go down there it's like literally 20 minute drive if that um, so it was just like so convenient and perfect and we had it all planned out. Like we talked to them, had it all planned out. Yeah. And uh, Christine, I could tell that she was nervous. Like she kept kind of making like hints like, ha, oh, this is going to be so scary. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? <laughs> um, and I was like, yeah, girl, that's why we're going. And then eventually she was like, she sent in, like a group message and she was like, hey, I it was know- so long. <laughs> you're like clearly I've been is... thinking about it for a oh, long time. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. And uh, and she's like, I know we have plans to go like really soon, but um, I I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm having all these really <laughs> weird dreams, and like something's telling me that like we're Listen in danger if we go. Yeah. It was literally yeah. like I was having dreams where spirit guides were like, "Do not go there," and I was like, "It's just a dream." But then I was like. W- what kind of idiot am I if I'm like, oh, my grandmother appeared from beyond the grave and said, hey, I have a message for you. Don't go into this basement of this bar. And then I wake up the next day and I'm like, um, isn't it so spooky how much I don't want to go to this place? And I'm like, <laughs> I guess. I'm so glad you didn't. <laughs> Wouldn't it be yeah. so funny if I just didn't show up with you guys? <laughs> um. and, then, and then Eva literally was on the call and goes, okay I wasn't gonna say anything because she always just kind of lets us do whatever we you know she she's supportive of whatever our choices are she's like I didn't want to like say anything um and she said but I have felt so weird about this and she had planned them before she had contacted so many different places um but she was like I just get such a bad feeling and she's like the people there are so kind and like really flexible easygoing it was gonna be like a hundred bucks like basically Whoa. you know wow. no money to spend like three days there or something like it was just the perfect setup and she was like I've been dragging my feet because it was we were only a couple weeks out she's like I have been dragging my feet I didn't want to call them I didn't want to like finalize the details something just felt so wrong um and so I was like thank god so we ended up yeah but also if you're only 10 minutes away I can only imagine what you would have like brought home with you yeah that was my other thought I'm like I have an infant at home and I'm like if my grandma's like stop it (laughs) probably gonna listen yeah it sounds like you would have had a real attachment come back well and also I feel like doesn't matter where you are so Nick's aunt went to Waverly Hills years ago she lives in Minnesota oh boy she went home and like had a feeling like there was someone mm. something around her and she was showering and one of the showers is down in the basement which is unfinished I don't know why but she was showering downstairs and she heard someone in the bathroom with her shut the and fuck up basically a little boy had followed her home from Waverly oh, Hills shit. across mm. state lines oh, on a plane sucks. no you know uh oh, shit. Christine and Eva both had readings before we investigated where we ended up going. And both of them were told that, um, that we should all have ghost hunting clothes that we assigned to oh. ourselves. Okay. And we, that was the woman I talked to. And then Eva was like, okay, I'm fully on oh, board. Oh, but, okay. but yeah, I had this reading. Well, I was on a podcast it's called ghost of a podcast, um, with Jessica Lanyado and she's just wonderful. So I just went on like to, as a guest on her podcast and then we did this kind of reading and near the end I was like oh guess where we're going and I like told her where it was and stuff and she was like oh boy 
And I was like, what? And she's like, this is not a great place. And I'm like, too late. You know, we're, we're going like in five days. She's like, okay, well, if I can't talk you out of it, then here's my tip. And it's to have like a dedicated set, especially of shoes. And I was like, that's weird. And she's like, yeah, just as almost a symbolic like thing. Rubber? Like hmm. Yeah, she was like, just yeah. have a set of shoes that you wear into this house, then kind of say like, okay, those are done. I'm putting them in the back of the closet until I need to like go somewhere else. Just try to keep yourself as like isolated That's from smart. try to keep the place as isolated from like your own day-to-day -day life as possible and you know do a cleansing and all that afterwards so we were slightly more prepared i feel i mean em do you because when we did our first show or i'm sorry our first tour at uh the queen mary in long beach we felt weird for i mean i feel like almost Days. a year we had a weird like curse thing on us that we kept oh. joking about but it was like we had to like have it removed but like do you, you actually had anything? it removed yeah, we had to talk to like these <laughs> our manager. We were we were like, "Do you know any like psychics?" And she was like, "Oh yeah, my good friend. Here's her number." And we called her. <laughs> we're like, "Help, we're cursed." And she was no, like, we okay. we had something weird going on after the Queen Mary. Honestly, even before that, but the Queen Mary really like I think that fucked us amplified up. it. But you uh, don't feel yeah. anything about our current one, right, Em? Like I, I mean, no. I don't jinx it, but I haven't felt like anything really dark has happened. That's since, good. Yeah, you know, I, I will say though, uh, like without like spoiling any content that we actually do in in the in the show like we ended up actually like having like kind of a bit of a sit down with the ghosts and like i feel like we parted ways like without right. anything oh, wanting to follow us back we uh it was let's just say it was a scary night and we ended up having like a bit of a heart to heart and <laughs> no. the, but a, as soon as we did like we even have it on camera all of us going like wow the energy feels so much different so i think that if we is so cool i think if we hadn't had that experience i think something might have tried to follow us home or give us a few bad days of you know yeah yeah dark yeah. energy something but it ended up being fine but what about you have you the two of you ever done a little ghost hunting or like have you been to a we yeah we stayed at the driscoll hotel in <gasps> um why am i blanking in austin austin, austin texas yes. yeah um, we were just I wanted there to we say stayed like there a few months Arizona. ago for the first time yeah it's so um, beautiful. beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful and we didn't get any bad vibes we mm -hmm. There was a point when we were falling asleep the first night where I was just like, I'm, I am scared I'm going to wake up and a ghost is going to be staring at me. Yeah. Oh, um, I was almost asleep. We were like <gasps> in our own beds for I was 45 minutes. I'm like almost asleep. And Sabrina goes, what if a ghost just shows up at the edge of our bed? <laughs> I didn't sleep the rest of the night. This is why Emma and I get separate rooms now. We're like, this bullshit. Well, we're I was scared. The, was... I, at the time, I'm like, Sabrina, get into the bed with me. Yeah. Well, not the... Oh, that happened to us at, uh, in New Orleans. Still. And there was a ghost that... um, There was a ghost in our hotel where Christine and I ended up... We had different rooms. And I just abandoned my room and just stayed in Christine's room. Because <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody kept knocking on my hotel room door. And I would, like, go open it. And nobody would be there. And I would... I kept texting Em, like, will you stop it? This is so irritating. Like, I'm trying to get ready for the show. And if you keep knocking and like running away and Em was like, sent me, this is not a joke, sent me a selfie from the toilet and was like, I am not knocking on I was your like, door. I am busy right now. <laughs> I had so something like that happen at a hotel in New Jersey. I was there for my sister got married and I was alone in the room and I kept getting phone calls and it's like midnight and I pick up. And it would be nothing. Like on your cell or on like the hotel room? On the hotel room. And I no. called down to the front desk and I was like, hey, the phone like keeps ringing. Are you calling me? And they checked the record. No calls had gone through to my room. My room. Forget Are it. Are you serious? I, that also happened, um, well, not phone wise, but TV wise. And so, no, I, I went to New Orleans the night before Christine and Eva. And uh, I was just, I went to another hotel that, some listicle said was like the most haunted hotel and I was just lying there in bed one night and all of a sudden the tv turned on by itself and I went hmm well uh you know I wasn't really interested in watching tv so whoever turned that on could you turn it off and the tv just turned off by itself <gasps> nah and then I went well oh. at least they listened and I was like that was that was very nice thank you and then two minutes later the tv turned on again and I went <laughs> you know no thank you i still don't really feel like watching tv and then the volume went all the way up by itself oh no and then the tv turned off and i went 
okay, noted. Well, I feel like you're probably going to watch TV whether or not I want to. So I'm just going to go to sleep and I'm going to just be, I'm here with good intentions and love and light and I don't need anything to, you know, interact with me. And when I woke up in the middle of the night, the TV had turned on again by itself. So something was watching TV while I slept. I mean, that spirit was like, hey, I listened to you the other night. I didn't watch TV. I didn't watch my show. But tonight... I'm watching it. Party Tonight is all about up. me. Yeah. You're like, excuse me. And they're just like volume up. Like <laughs> volume keeps you. turning Can't up. Can't hear so you. That's so good. That accidentally, <laughs> Corinne accidentally stayed at a haunted hotel that we had talked oh, really? about, but somehow. Which one? Uh, the Congress Hotel in Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago. Oh. Yeah, we had literally covered it. Like, oops, sorry, uh, that's noisy. You had done like, like a whole episode on it? Full episode. <laughs> I had to go there for work before this was my full-time job. Um, and I was looking at places to stay in Chicago and I was like, oh, this hotel must be good. I recognize the name. Like, I must know people, like this must be where people stay. I recognize, oh, oh what the fuck? Are you okay? What just happened? Are you? I don't know what happened. I don't you know. just like <laughs> vanished. I'm scared now for you. Yeah. All I heard was I after I talked, then I I heard Sabrina say, "Oh, and Corinne," and then it just went away. Everyone just went away. Oh no! Freaky. I don't know what happened. Okay, well, whatever um, story was told, I absolutely missed of course, it. So, I, I or didn't some even ghost tell is yet. like, there's some <laughs> Maybe ghost you don't being like, know. stop talking about this. Yeah, it's that yeah. TV ghost. He's probably pissed off that you keep talking to him, <laughs> <laughs> shit talking him. <laughs> no, but I stayed at the Congress Hotel mm. in Chicago. Nice. Um, didn't realize it was haunted when I booked it, despite having just recently done a full episode on it. Just. Back that sounds like mind. something we would do. Yeah. Um, just like yeah. forget about it. Totally. must stay here. I recognize that name. I, it looks <laughs> familiar. <laughs> yes. And I, I just had like really weird feelings when I was in there. So I actually started to research it while oh, no. I was in there. And then of course. And I, your, your like pages, like your files open up on your computer. And they're yes. like, yeah. oh, this is literally your notes. <laughs> I <laughs> you barely slept. And this is, I'm going to, I'm going to bring us down for a moment. And uh, right. um, we were having night, too much, but anyway. <laughs> That night, a friend of Sabrina and and mine passed away, and <gasps> I was, was I night? woke up in the hotel oh, shit. and just had a really strong urge to look at her on Find My Friends. No, um, oh god! And I was sharing my location with her, but she wasn't sharing her location with me, and so I just kind of like stared at it for a few minutes and was like, I don't know why I'm getting this weird feeling. And her and I hadn't. I mean, we had both moved from Los Angeles, which is where our friend group had been and hadn't like kept in much one-on-one -on -one communication. So I had seen her maybe like once or twice in the past two years and didn't like, it was just kind of odd that I felt drawn to look yeah. at her yeah. find my friends, but I was yeah. in this hotel. And then the next day around 2 PM, I got the call that she had passed away. And when someone, mm -hmm. when the person told me when she had passed, it was at that, that moment night. that I was looking. Oh. Oh my god! My Holy With the time shit. change, it was the same time. It actually would have been her thirtieth birthday this Friday. That we're oh my god! Oh god! Mm -hmm. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's bad. That's yeah, horrific. But like, it's things like that. You know, when people pass too, like there's so there's so much that happens with friend groups, with loved mm -hmm. ones. Like so many, so many different signs. People I had a lot of so dreams about her too. Yeah. 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 I had one though. This one's okay. This is a little bit more uplifting. Um and kind of goes back to like our dream world, what's going on. Um, I was having, cause I've had a lot of experiences like in my dreams, my, I've had like full conversations with my grandfather who's passed yeah. away, but I was having an, just a regular dream and the entire dream froze. It was, what? and then a door opened and our friend Olivia came in and was like, hi, I was just, you know, I just happened to see like basically you're in the dream world. I just wanted to pop in and say hi to everyone. I like miss them and love them. And then she's like, gotta go, have other things to do, and left. Oh. Girl, she's already planning. She's got she's climbing a ladder, a social ladder, yeah. and making buddies. And <laughs> yeah. I feel oh like gosh. oh my gosh. Well, what yeah. happened after or did she just kind of my pop dream away? resumed. She left, my dream resumed. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's Christine. Trippy. 
I, I, you know, I'll catch you in the dream world, but I, I hope to be that busy in the afterlife of like, I have <laughs> shit to do. I have people zero to see. doubts. Like I'll yeah. show up and you'll be like, mm, sorry, I actually have plans for the next <laughs> 300 years. Find your yeah. own. <laughs> I like, well, I had, so I had a friend die and he was um, on my, like, we didn't go ghost hunting together, but we worked at the same company and he, he knew that like the ghost hunting part of the job was, was my favorite part. And he knew I was a big believer, but he was a skeptic. And so when I would be mm. setting up equipment for the night, he'd be like, you think that stuff even really works? And I was like, well, I think so. And he, we made a deal. He was like, all right, well, whoever goes first, we have to test it out. And then he literally died. And yeah. uh, it was like, a, I actually, it was, I had been thinking about him a lot and I'd been texting him kind of similar how you s- looked at find my friends that day. Um I had a really weird feeling and just started texting him more often. And apparently when I started texting him was when he passed and I didn't find out until like a month later that he had <gasps> passed. So you started texting him, not even knowing that, it not happened. even knowing, wow. but I was just God. like, Hey, I'm coming back. It was like, he was my friend around school, but I, you know, I, it was summer break. And so I was like, Hey, I'm coming back to town soon. I can't wait to see you. Like, we're going to go do this. We got this going Oof. on. And, um, and then when I got back, I found out that he had passed away and I was like, you know, well, now I've got to get the ghost equipment out and test it because we, he said he would be there to test the equipment with me. And But he was a huge skeptic. And so um, I put all the equipment out just to see if anything would happen. Nothing happened. And so and now I'm like psyching myself out of like. He could have been there, but just wanted to like win That's the argument and like yeah, just yeah. not oh, say anything yeah. off. He was but just so, standing there, like, nice try. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this like is how, um, how long will M sit here and wait? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so then he ended up. Uh, so I was putting all the equipment away. I was like, all right, you win. I guess like you know, I guess this is, I guess you win. So I was putting all the equipment away, and then all of a sudden my. Um, carbon monoxide detector in the apartment oh, kept going off by itself and every time i would try to get near it it would turn off and every time i would leave it would start blaring again and every time i got near it it would turn off and it was it literally became a game where as i was getting closer no. it would start like the volume would slowly dim down but it wouldn't turn off Ooh. all the way and it was like playing hot or cold with me right and <laughs> so i was like adam if that's you like what is going on and then it blared it was just like the <gasps> loudest sound and then turned off by itself oh Chills. And then I found out he died from carbon monoxide poisoning. In his home. In his home. And my and my alarm was totally fine. There was no it didn't actually detect oh anything. Gosh. It was just glitching. Oh my. Whoa. So that was I was like, all right, thanks for letting me have that at least. But yeah. We still oh. don't know if the equipment officially works. But you know, he was <laughs> well, maybe he was at least need a, to bring a carbon monoxide detector with us. I guess time. well at least to to make contact with him, but with he was him, at least yeah. He was at least a homie to say, like, wow. all right, I'll let you get yeah. something out of this. I mean, maybe wow. his message was you don't need all of that fancy ghost hunting equipment. True. It just, yeah. whatever works. <laughs> I'll choose if something that. wants on to the make wall. contact, it Anything will. Anything with a button, yeah. I can just press it. You know? That's actually yeah. a good point. He was like, I'm not going to touch any of that because I don't want you to know it's real, but I can mess with anything else and <laughs> that'll be that'll work well, just fine. I mean, that that's what always confounds me. Stories of when people's toys that don't have batteries in them go off Mm -hmm. oh yeah my brother had a bunch of toys I mean their batteries were in them but he had a fire truck that you needed to press buttons to make it go off and it would Mm -hmm. go off all the time Mm. and um actually my favorite story is I was having a sleepover and my childhood home was haunted um and I was like down in the basement we were telling ghost stories and people were like I don't believe in ghosts and as I was saying that there's a little boy who haunts the place the fire truck started going off no! and, uh, <laughs> which oh my God. in the moment was terrifying but in retrospect I'm like that's so cool hell like, yeah the ghost is helping me out talk about a homie he's like I got yeah. you don't worry <laughs> you're gonna be like either the most popular together. or least popular person to have sleepovers yeah. <laughs> with after that <laughs> We, you know, my mom and her, when she was a little kid, she always heard that there was a ghost in her basement. And so she used a Ouija board when she was younger and found out that the guy's name was Fred and he died from an axe. Ew. Oh. And then oh. later looked up 
the like paperwork or you know found out history about the house and found out a guy named fred actually died by an axe and her and that's a very specific type of death. yeah like, yes. that's not Such just like your death. average every day so, so wild and even like think about i mean we live in america our yeah. houses aren't built in mm-hmm. 1410 where there's been mm-hmm. you know, that old yeah 10 freds potentially who've, who've lived <laughs> right, there right point. you know like right there point. there aren't that many owners for the majority of the houses so when we find proof like this it's just like my mind is like like it makes me be like how could anyone not believe exactly thank you i do love when there's an answer when you yeah when there's a way to get closure confirmation of what happens. Yes. yeah yeah a confirmation yeah, and well, you're also, like, well, explain that. You can't, you know. Yeah. Well, just like how you're saying, like our houses aren't that old, and yet there's so many ghosts. Imagine the places where houses have been around for hundreds of years, <laughs> yes. and like, and for those families to be like, oh, we don't know if it's haunted. It's like I can fucking Duh. attest. I <laughs> promise it's haunted. It's like yeah. if my house built in '96 uh, is haunted, your house is definitely haunted. <laughs> right. I'm sure definitely. you guys get emails like this too, where people will be like. I'm a skeptic. I don't really believe in the paranormal. Here's what happened to me, though. But, and then it will be like yeah. the most like yeah. wild, horrendous <laughs> haunting we've ever heard. And they're like, anyway, thanks for doing I what you do. I can't explain it. It's like <laughs> a ghost picked me up by my collar and flew me through the skies. And anyway, I don't but know anyhow, if it really happened. It could have just been a draft or something a weird. Draft. <laughs> Well, we, you know, one of the best things that has come out of our tour, uh, always, I and I can speak for Christy on this too, is that our favorite thing that happens on tour is when someone drags mm-hmm. their like skeptic boyfriend, um, <laughs> yes, and then they like they leave believing in ghosts. That's uh, the back craziest. When, back thing. when we did meet and greets, sometimes people would come in the line and be like, "I don't feel good now." Like I came here being like, "This is just a bunch of bullshit," and then they were like. But I don't feel good, and I'm a little freaked out to go home. And oh. we're like, "Oh, good." Yeah. We need to bring, I know like, we always little tiny crystals, like little black tourmaline, and just give, give like them pebbles of it to the people that are extra scared. <laughs> Here you go. Just put this in your phone. We, It'll be you. okay. That would be we actually. Always... That would be really smart to like have like on everyone's seat in the audience, just like a little safety spell, a little protection. Yeah. You get a black tourmaline, and you yeah. get a black tourmaline. Yeah, you guys should. Yeah, for your we future. always joke that we're the most haunted podcast in America because one, Corinne and I have experienced so many things with recordings, with just Mm -hmm. the years of, of the podcast. And we get so many emails from listeners who after listening to our show have experiences or while listening things happen. And yeah. So we're like, sorry. So the the important takeaway is that the, the ghosts know that we are all here podcasters. Uh They, they know they that these to. shows exist. And they're they just kicking M out of the Zoom. So I wonder what that means. <laughs> right? <laughs> Are you, have you guys talked about any dolls Don't, on your show? I knew you were going to bring this up. Have you talked yes. about PTD? No. I won't say her name. Oh, okay. It's a name that uh, starts with I a say, P. Should I say her name? I'll say her name. Say it okay, out of order, say, maybe. And then I it will. Takes... Oh, it's the doll. And Comma. her name happens to be who is formerly known and currently known as Peggy. Okay. We haven't, but okay. I have read about, I have read if, about. We call it PTD. <laughs> yeah. We're too scared to say her name in real life. If you, mm-hmm. um, if you're scared, although I'm we scared, have, so I won't either. <laughs> well, this is how stupid we are. We are scared of her, but then we've also gone to Zach Bagans and spoken to her face to face and looked her in the eyes. So I don't know Honestly, what we're doing. We're, we're a little sick in the head and it's like, we're just excited. It's, it's the questionable, like, what is this? It's strange. I want to know more. It's tempting. Yeah, I get it. It's well, like the unknown. Yeah, I'm just yeah. warning you that if you happen to, oh boy, it sounds it sounds like you have a podcast similar to ours where people have had experiences after listening to episodes. PTD is said to like cause people like heart attacks and nosebleeds. Like we did a trigger warning for her before we told the story, and then people still wrote in saying like, "I was listening to your episode and I flipped my car on the way to the, work." And like, literally, we have pictures of like flipped cars, crashed cars, nosebleeds, like just the weird. Someone had a seizure listening to see, it. As- even even you saying this makes me want to research it now. Like, oh, just I was give us maybe the opposite. I was like, "That's one episode I will never lo- like." How do I delete that one? Ep- ban this episode yeah. from your. I never want to listen to it when I listen to your podcast. If you I if you listen. cover it, just maybe do a warning to people that like yeah. if you're driving, fucking pull over. Yeah, <laughs> so. Or or listen to it later. Yeah, yeah. 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 like someone... really polite to her is what I. Yeah, mean. we had someone um, listening to 
episode 12 dominus which is like this we read a mm. listener story that is horrifying i remember that episode i have and, listened to that episode and someone was driving in a bird like late at night a bird flew into her windshield and she like swerved and crashed her car <gasps> oh my god but it's I mean, like the worst terrifying story to be listening to for that to happen where it's just and like at this. night and then you're like alone in so in a nope. car crash listening to yeah. oh ah, it. no. it's so yeah all this isn't it we're all just tempting fate a little bit here huh? i know i know and then i'm like i'll say her name like what's matt what's wrong <laughs> well we we also looked in her eyes and went hello so you know yeah <laughs> we clearly can't be controlled polite. yeah so we were polite. and every uh, christine who has now gone ghost hunting with me a few times can attest to this too is that I very much believe in saying goodbye before, you know, like when you're closing out of a space. And the way I say goodbye, Christine, would you like to um, reenact it at all? Bye, goodbye, 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 <laughs> goodbye. So Adios. kind. Alvita Zane, every type of goodbye you could possibly think I of. I say it Don't in every me. inflection, every accent, every language, like whatever you need to hear, however oh, you need to hear it. Oh my gosh. But like, like profess I, your love. You're like, I love you so much. Stay here. Don't come with me. Stay here. I love you, but Christine. Stay. Yeah, <laughs> Christine had to was the one who edited all of our footage after we went in, on our investigations, and I feel like you probably just had to highlight like three <laughs> minutes of me saying goodbye and deleted. I've like memorized the waveform. I'm just like yeah. okay, forty five goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just I uh, I think when we saw PTD in real time, I probably said goodbye still on the plane out of Las yeah, you were Vegas. Still so I was like, goodbye. It. I Corinne and I spook ourselves out so much. Mm -hmm. Also, what's your cat's name? Three this questions. Is Sorry, Juniper. But I think he might be the reincarnation of PTD because he is pretty demonic, and it's starting to click. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I get it. Um, he's pretty demonic, but yes, this is Juniper. Yeah, my big um, boy. He's so cute. Do you ever spook yourselves out so much that then things start to happen? Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if yeah. it's like I've opened myself up to things that were already there and now I'm just more aware of them or if nothing was going on and I caused this by like being open yeah. to it. Mm. I don't know yeah. which it is. That's but a great point. There are a lot of times um, it's I mean, it's the same thing as like if I am end up on like spooky TikTok and like mm -hmm. it's three in the morning then all of a sudden I realize how silent it is in my apartment <laughs> yes. but um but sometimes I'm like it really wasn't this fucking quiet a second ago and now all of a sudden it's real creepy but mm -hmm. um I think I I guess I have to believe that that's what happens because I also very much believe in like if I close myself off from this nothing can get me which yeah I don't know if that's true or not but I have convinced myself you want to believe it. it yeah yeah like and so I think if I want to believe that, like, I'm able to close things out, then I'm also able to open things up. And I just, it's probably a, a slippery slope that it happens more than I want. Do you guys do that, like, after you do an episode? Because I feel like it's kind of different for us just because we end on true crime. So I feel like we get pulled from that headspace a bit and it becomes, like... Like, we don't end on, like, the scariest ghost story, if that makes sense. Like, we, we end on true crime. So I feel like we kind of, like, talk our way out of that, like, fear. We um, totally but you guys probably. should. Like, Creeps and Crimes, they do, well, very specifically. Like, Creeps and Crimes, they do a lot of, like, cleansing. And they have their space all, all set. And we were like, oh, maybe we should take inspiration from that. We never have, except for this past October, we decided to theme our episodes all like dark demonic Demons. episodes. Oh boy. And oh god, what actually, a bold decision. Yeah, well we we quit halfway through the month of October because literally it was so upsetting because my the way that my microphone, I lit candles behind me. We were like, "Oh, let's get, you know, like uh -huh. have a nice backdrop." I was seated over here, so I had this whole like black bureau just like lit with some some various tapered candlesticks like what is behind Sabrina right now. Um, and the candle that was perfectly hidden behind the microphone, I'm Sabrina's talking, and I just see behind my head some like smoke. And I'm like, oh, was your hair on fire? No, that but would have been terrifying. I turned, <laughs> and I look, <laughs> and I see behind me that one of the many candles, which are no drip candles, they're I mean I've used them for years. One of them. It was just like going like crazy and the flame lifts off. Like I no. literally watched the flame, like what? the fire lift off 
float like six inches in the air. I start screaming. I go, oh, and then it goes back down. But I'll send you guys the video because I attempted to get some proof. And I think I got like a split second of it actually happening on (gasps) camera. But we were so spooked. Like things started to happen. Also, after we covered La Llorona, like my Ooh. all of the the pipes in my um, bathroom, which have never ever made a noise and haven't since, were suddenly like clinging and clanging. And so there have been just a few episodes where we're like, like oh, topic, shit, we should yeah. bless oh this thing God. at the top or at the end. You know, it's so weird because I feel like we had this phase where we we were like, there's something either attached to us like the podcast like as a business almost it felt like everything was being like almost comically being thrown in our path as like an obstacle or like the network we were on at the time they kept trying to hang up our logo on the wall and it just kept shattering they were like every morning we come in and it's on the floor we've replaced this frame they were like we tried velcro we tried nails we put it on a different wall and they were like it won't stay so then they just propped it up on the counter and like all the other podcasts are on the wall they're like we're not messing with this like we've cleaned up so much glass so like stuff like that kept happening and at the time we were like you know we must have brought something home from queen mary we weren't sure but like that makes me think like what if we just either got like fan mail or like talked about something we didn't even realize like what we had done it could be so many things yeah this this is gonna sound i don't mean it in the way it's gonna sound but i am glad to know this because now i don't feel like corinne and i are alone to to know that we're also we're not the only target this we're not alone um, not at all i, no, I think i feel like all of the uh the paranormal podcast should like have like a weekly like group therapy zoom where we all just like talk about like what is going on we should I would go on attend. a retreat but i feel like that Wait, would be okay. so dangerous Wait, oh, i have an idea i would love I to have... do that if we all went to salem together or something let's go away i have an idea i'm trying yes. to buy a house so if i have a house by the time that october comes you guys will have free room and board and we'll no, go no, to no. Sale. Gonna, okay. Scream. This is I'm my idea scream. that I've had for so long. So we were doing Spotify Live and doing um, live, like having people campfire. tell their stories. Yeah, yeah. campfire mm-hmm. stories. And then, but I was like, okay, we have so many badass female podcast friends in the spooky realm. Mm-hmm. Let's all get together, do a 24 hour live stream from a haunted location, and we. It's like a fun sleepover where yeah. we're kind of delusional in so a haunted space. So we've signed space. you guys up. We've signed up Patrick <sighs> from down. TCO. We've signed up like every but all of our podcast friends. Ash and we, Elena, in our minds, yeah. have slated you guys into this dream, <laughs> and you guys don't know it, but you have a spot that you have. We'll happily this is do our it. Lucid dream. <laughs> we'll happily do it. But I also say you should definitely bring backups for your backups for the camera because if we're all in a haunted place for 24 hours, that stream That's is true. shutting down. That's yeah, true. true. That's <laughs> the true. equipment malfunction. We all need to like bring our own and extra batteries yeah. just in case. Yeah. Also, Dude, what you guys dream, had the, the Spotify show rituals and this is making me, uh, you guys will find this funny. We got someone sent a ritual in the mail, but I didn't know what it was at first. So it was like the, you blow the cinnamon out your door on the first of the month and they had the printed out little thing. But all I got was a baggie of this strangely colored powder. And I thought it was like code orange. Finally, we were getting yeah. poisoned. Like it Impress. was coming for us. <laughs> and they're like, it's cinnamon. <laughs> it, yeah. And then I read the note and it's like, blow the cinnamon out your door for good luck. And I'm like, oh, oh boy. Okay. Grace is a And that's fair they though. With like such good intention. And then you're like, I'm being yeah. murdered. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair though. Cause we have gotten some really wild stuff in the mail. So like, I think, and I'm sure you have too, that like it's eventually you just wonder what is coming to your door yeah. and what what they're expecting yeah. you to interact with have you with. received haunted objects in the mail yes you too? yeah someone came to a live show of ours and brought a rock from the bell witch cave or and, I think uh, which it you're might have been a flower. not supposed to do or a flower yes but we were like we sent that right back we were like thank you so much and then the next day i was like posted for the <laughs> overnight like, we really expedited. appreciate the intention but we don't want to get haunted yeah, we've had a, a lot of haunted things and a lot of um, like we've had some really dark stuff. Someone sent us um, like upsetting, like candles from a vigil of a school shooting, like <gasps> really and dark we were stuff. Like, why would you mail? And it was like anonymous. So, like we don't even know who mailed it. But oh we were like, gosh. this is not good. We even had to do like a PSA on the show to be like, please stop sending us like yeah. ashes of people and like oh hairs of victims. Like, and 
containers we, of teeth or something? Oh, we get oh, teeth. Oh, so many teeth. So many teeth. There was one person who went to a meet and greet. And I honestly, I don't know enough about like the witchcraft world. Maybe teeth is a good thing. But <laughs> as someone who's not part of that world, all I saw was a bucket of teeth. And I was like kind of freaked out about it. Um, but there was one guy who came to our show and he's like, oh, I forgot your gift I forgot in, the car. in the car. And he was like, no, 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 you really want it. It's like 200 different people's teeth. And I was like, <laughs> I was and like, we just looked at Eva and Eva was like, we're wrapping up the meet and greet. So sorry. You can, uh, we'll, we'll be in touch. Bye. <laughs> Which like, I, I just, I don't know. I'm sure it was like going to be delivered to us with love, but like I, I just, like, what was I going to do? Go through the TSA with 200 people's teeth? And, like, how was that going to work, you know? It's like sharp objects. You're just going to make a dollhouse marble yeah. floor out of oh, teeth. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so, God. But we ended up having to put out a PSA of, like, you know, no thank you so much. Parts, but you we're know. done with body parts and things from vigils. Which so. you wouldn't think you needed to say. You, but... We certainly didn't. Until it was you know? too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we've had, we've also, had, we've talked about it a lot on, on our own show. But there was, um... Uh, we literally like in a horror movie got sent this big wooden box we had to pry open with like a crowbar a and like a crate and then it was filled with hay like a horror movie Hell no. and we had to go digging through it and we found this porcelain doll with a note without a return address that said like please she said i intentionally did not put a return address because i don't want yeah. it back and it said every time That's we bring so it into mean. the it said every time every time we bring it into the house our barn catches on fire and so it's like well, we don't want it. So now your house is <laughs> what on fire? What did you fire? do? Yeah, she's like, oh, we put it in our child's room, but she kept having nightmares that it would, like, talk to her, and then she got this weird attachment. But then we put it on our barn, and the entire barn caught on fire, so you can have it. And we were like, are you, you guys? We are like, we're not Zach Bagans. Give it to him. Is a bird. There is a bird uh -oh. staring at me. Is he uh -oh. on fire? <laughs> no, but, I, but I've but i never had, like, What's he birds doing? don't just sit Intense here eye contact. and look at me. Is he I, telling like, you? I, I get bad vibes from it. Ew. Oh, shit. Okay, note the time. It's 333. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Does that <gasps> mean something? <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like it does. Everything means something. 333. Three, three, three. Three. It's half of six Times six. two podcasts yeah. <laughs> equals <laughs> some, some sort of numerology. Yeah. Math. Wait, so what did you do with the doll? <laughs> So I M was like, okay, I'm going home. Bye. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. So this is mine now, I suppose. Um, and it came with a horse, like a like a toy horse. I mean, I'm not kidding. It was like like a big, almost a life size horse. It was not a life size horse, but it was like a big old horse. Um, and I I honestly M I don't remember. We put it in the closet and then just for a shut long the door time. for a yeah. long time. Um, and then and we were like, love you, bye. And then like shut the door. Um, and then nothing caught on fire i don't think uh but yeah they were like oh well we don't want it and you are the only people we could think to mail it to and i was like there's what? so many people there's yeah, actual there's collectors so museums yeah, you could have ebayed this thing for like Wait, okay. a good amount of money this is a good time so there's a etsy shop called aeonian spirits a-e-o-n-i-a-n -A that wrote into us once but they collect haunted dolls and then See? find new homes for them so and get there are we places. have listeners who have purchased dolls through From them. this shop yes. and okay, have integrated these dolls successfully into their family, you know, have polite hauntings from them. But you get the yeah, full description lovely. of like, okay, here's here's the spirit that is attached to this doll. Here's how they it's it's like adopting a dog where it's like here's it's their like a build a bear where it tells yeah. you like its whole birth certificate <laughs> right it's like here's their personality here's what triggers them here's what they respond like, well keep to keep them in this kind of a space environment. yeah yeah exactly. totally yeah yeah, totally. yeah so i did not get that kind of information with this doll unfortunately <laughs> and i was just staring at her and i was like well i don't want to just donate her to goodwill because then what if like i'm just passing this along to some unsuspecting yeah. child it's very kind of you Right, but also I was like, I don't want to just put her in the trash because then it's probably gonna like haunt me for the rest of my what life. What if she yes. walks back in? <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> that's like a hormone. Like she just reappears, and we're like, Who? Annabelle. Took She's her just out lying in bed when you come back in from throwing her out. <laughs> Forget it. She's like, I'm still here. Yeah, I I don't remember what we did. I'm pretty sure I was like Googled like cleanse a haunted doll, and then I just like donated it. I think I don't know. I, I honestly can't remember. But she was in the closet for a long time. <sighs> Yikes. Someone else has that doll now. I hope that she has been kinder to them than the previous yeah. owner. <laughs> that is so freaky. Okay, I'm glad that we haven't gotten any of the stuff like that. that of you course, we, we also filmed it for Patreon. So we're like, 
cool like we were trying to be really positive but we were both like oh my god what are we doing terrifying (laughs) thank you so much i'm not gonna leave over this for three months at all (laughs) what kind of stuff have you guys had sent to you I feel like we've mostly received nice things. This yeah. actually is my favorite. I use it all the time. Oh, I so love Corinne's a lovely. Lovely. Bigfoot. I'm obsessed with aliens. And so Fuck alien yeah. Bigfoot. Like that. I think we've we been them. very clear about feeling scared. And so we generally don't get too much. That's, that's nice. Crosses. We get a lot line. of soap. And a lot of, a lot of soap. intention candles. We get candles. Like a lot of yeah. candles, which yeah. I love. I swear yeah. I go through them love all candles. the time. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Halloween's my favorite when they send Halloween candy. I'm like, mm. <laughs> yes. Kick and we all eat it, even though we might be poisoned. It's fine. Right. Homemade cookies, I eat them. All eat of them, them too. They're in a Ziploc bag. I don't care. Yeah, I'm them. delicious. <laughs> there's I'm been a few trusting. people at our. There's been a few people at our live shows where they've sent like baked goods backstage, and they're like, oh, so "We made nice. this with our hands today." And I'm like, I feel like. I should wonder what this is about, but I'm just going to eat it anyway. Well, a lot of times it's like bakeries, but sometimes it's like, I made this last night in my kitchen. We're like, okay, thank you. I mean, it's very nice. Yeah. I don't like to think about people baking and cooking too much because the majority of people that bake at home and even oftentimes in restaurants and and stuff, they're not like wearing latex like sanitized. You know, like (laughs) we are actually always eating other people's skin cells and oils. Yeah. Thank you. Now, here you go. Um, also, if you eat if you eat my baked goods, you're also eating my cat's hair because right. I just can't help it. It's That's everywhere. A given. It's in Sorry. the air. Well, yeah. also keep in mind. So we also do true crime on our show. So I think I'm more worried about like, did someone put glass in mm. this cake or something? Oh right, that, that always oh, freaks me out. Christine's yeah. like got a mouthful of it already. I'm when like, I'm like, should we? Care. I'm always like, oh my god, someone could have poisoned this. And then I'm like, I'm like, what <laughs> did you say? Your mouth is full. I'm like, I don't. It doesn't matter. I beat it. But you do already. treat your cases with such kindness too when you cover them. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. That I mean, that's the one big thing that we're really trying to do with the true crime, like. It's yeah. hard because it's like, oh, we have a comedy show about ghosts yeah. and murder. And it's like, that's not funny. No, it's not the funny. It's a fine line. Right. Yeah. It is a weird line to walk. But the you know, jokes aren't at find. the expense of anyone in no, the, right. the crime portion of exactly. the show. Exactly. Yeah. The bird is the... still here. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> that I'm is pretty sure it's a surveillance camera. Wait, can you ask me what type yeah, of bird? I mean, bird, can you ask birds me? Aren't can real. I... <laughs> birds aren't real. They are a. What kind of bird is it? It's gray. I'm really into birds right now. So Me this too. Is, I, don't really know. I have binoculars. No way. I use them sometimes for birds, but mostly to watch other people that are my neighbors. Christina's <laughs> been like memorizing bird calls. It's become a very weird special interest. I'm hers. collecting them in my app where I like can identify birds. Let me see if I can get a picture. Oh, if she you is... send me a picture. I will literally be able to upload it and, oh? and get a name. Wait, what is it's literally like, as I literally as I put my phone away. Up, it blew away. I knew of course it. It, did. it knew. Uh, um, the app is literally like real life Pokemon, where if she gets a picture of every type of bird, she like collects them over no, time. No, no. Yeah, Blaze does call it my real life Pokemon. I'm like, we would go on like walks and I'll be like, hold on, let me capture him. And I'll like <laughs> zoom in on a bird. Um, but it's That's so how I fun. feel about it's... plants. Yeah. Oh, they have those apps too. Yeah. Um, I'm going to send app. you the app later because okay. it's really fun. Um, and you have to send that and the class that you're Oh, yeah, right. Taking. The astral. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think you guys owe me something too, but I forget what it is. I, I know. I'll, I'll, that sounds right. When I re-listen. Yeah, oh, yeah. You have to listen to this. <laughs> That's when Sucker. we'll be like, oh, by the way, we all have homework here. And let's. Oh, yeah. oh no. I love how we had come up with a plan. We're like, oh, we're going to do this. And then. Oh, God. It always goes. Talk yeah. Whole. This is way but more But this fun. is amazing. Also, Christine, you were talking earlier about like the desire to. And Sabrina and I have talked a lot about like the same desire to do the. Like some sort of thing where we get to try something and like a every variety show where you're episode, trying. Yeah. I feel like we should just do that. We should create our own little cult and try this stuff. Cause it's kind of like Fuck yes. it's kind of like Dark Taurus yes. meets um Yes. Yes. Oh God, what's the that guy's name? The like uh uh-huh, 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 like Jurassic Park guy. Oh my god. What is his name? No idea what you're talking about. Uh huh, uh huh, guy. The, uh, Let's just call that. <laughs> Wait, Christine, do you know what I'm talking Brian about? Brian is I, failing us. Brian, Brian hurry up. Brian. <laughs> get, oh, oh, I didn't even need it. Jeff Goldblum. That's who I was talking yes, about. Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, I know why you said that. I was that. like, okay. Em, you know uh-huh, the guy uh-huh. from Jurassic <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. I, like his show yeah. where he goes and tries new things. I think I've should... never heard of his show. Oh, I think it's on Disney Plus. 
And he goes, it like, called? he literally goes Bigfoot hunting with Greg and Dana Newkirk on it. So Are you fun. serious? Yeah. So, I mean, that exists, and now we need to piggyback like off that. of Jeff Goldblum's now we will do it. show and do it. But another thing Sabrina and I have long said we wanted to do, which you guys basically did, was we're always talking about going on a haunted road trip, and you literally have a book, The Haunted Road Atlas. Well, yeah. So, so you have a guide go, now. <laughs> we're going to we go, follow you... your book. Yeah. Can oh. you let us know? Because a lot of those places we've actually been to, and then we wrote it during COVID, so it was kind of like an homage to like when we could travel. And now that things are happening again, it's we also fun. we felt so bad because up until the day that like we couldn't make any more edits, we were still checking locations to make sure they were still open after COVID. So, um, if you bump into anything that's closed, sorry in advance. Just bring a pencil <laughs> and cross it out. But what were some of the best it places happens. that you, or maybe not best, but like your your favorite haunted mm. spots mm. so i wrote the true crime so em what is your favorite haunted <laughs> spot? yeah this is all me i don't really well have actually favorite. i i do have an answer um and i not to like toot my own horn here but i encourage you to go listen to the episode if you want to cover the topic because i couldn't find really a lot of information anywhere and i ended up having to do a bit of a deep dive so i think i've got it a pretty good amount of notes if you need to some note inspiration for your own episode one day if if you haven't covered this yet but um while writing the book i discovered the saddamsville rectory have you heard of this no no okay it rocked my world it was uh, see, it's I like i still don't know anything about it it's like in my town right it's in cincinnati yeah. and it's Whoa. apparently like it's super fucking scary um and I had to, like, there was, like, Zach Bagans did an episode there, so I had to watch that. And then there was little patches of things. But I ended up getting all the information. It's If you want the blurb version, it's in the book. If you want the long version, I did an episode on it because I couldn't shut up about it. Um, and it's this. I like how I'm uh, like, I don't know anything about it. And then you're like, we did a whole episode about it. Listen if, for if, if you the whole time, remember. you're just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing the beer palm. You and, I was you and Brian. Stay awake. <laughs> You and Brian were like, how soon can we get out of this? And then you just fell asleep. Um, there was a, uh, but it's this, it used to be a rectory. And then one of the um, like students there ended up like, I think, I think he hanged himself. And then uh, there was a lot of torment there. There was a lot of abuse. I think there was a lot of child abuse there. Oh. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of dark shit, yeah. but there ended up being this, it ended up kind of falling into I don't know what the right word is there. It ended up being kind of empty and abandoned. And this couple took it over and they planned on renovating it. And I think they were renovating it to one day live there, but then it was so scary. They were just renovating it to like kind of sell it as something else. Jeez. Well, I just Googled it. And apparently the first thing that came up was that it's for sale. So, uh, okay. That makes wow. sense. And they, okay. So if, is that our next endeavor? We go in. So on, are we, is that where the, it? that's our next <laughs> investment. Wait, what if that's where the, um, where we, we did the live is. stream? There yeah. was yeah. Yeah. Sleepover. But sure. We'll buy it and then all the te- buckets of teeth and haunted dolls you guys get, we'll just put it. <laughs> just leave it there. there. Just yeah. leave it That's there. That's not. Oh my God, M's frozen again. I'm telling you. Something's you know, it might be happening. a sign. Something's happening. I think the universe is like, please don't, don't buy that. Oh, M? There you are. I heard bucket of teeth and then I went away. <laughs> <laughs> it's cursed. I don't know what the fuck's going on because it I, says my internet's fine. And I, I swear we rec- we record over Zoom like every week and yeah, we, this does too. not happen. So I don't know what's It's what the spiritual going on. world being like, it's like the ghost that um, you experienced where they were turning the TV on and off. They're, I know. The same ghost is like, I'm done. There's like, goodbye. You're delete, done. Delete. <laughs> I mean, if we're um, all bringing this energy and we're in our own respective homes and just meeting on the internet, I can't even imagine when we're all actually together. in real together it'll be a vortex it'll be a vortex it will. I feel like well, how fun. we'll bring anyway, the creeper we so create the, the creeper. don't you dare we'll create the creeper too creeper too anyway this this rectory ended up the the couple that was working on it the husband got weirdly attached oh no and he mm. started there was even like um during one of the episodes they he wasn't answering his phone for hours when he was supposed to be home she went to go check on him to see if he was at the rectory and for hours he had lost time and was just sitting in a chair staring and waiting no. for her to show up Gross. and then started talking to her in a way that like like his voice was different his like My dialect gosh. was different the words were different <sighs> and eventually like picked her up and threw her into the <gasps> wall what and like it, w- it was so, so we're not fucking scary there. oh they, yeah what? i don't know they apparently that. did an exorcism there 
Um, and then while he was still renovating the place, um, I think his his brother died, and all of a sudden he started hearing his brother's voice in the house. And it's haunting a Hill to, House. They yes. had to bring someone in to be like, he's that's not your brother. That's someone trying to like feed off of you that while you're vulnerable. Like that's something I attaching. No, that is it so... was so fucking scary. That, oh, what a yeah. <laughs> Let's Holy leave everyone crap. with like terrified chills. By the <laughs> yeah, end that's of a good thing to end on. Let's note. just yeah. okay. <laughs> give everyone Horror. nightmares right. who listens to this. That is horrifying. Yeah. Do you remember what episode you covered that on? I don't remember. Well, we have an episode guide on our website. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. A, a positive way to end the show mm-hmm. is for everyone to say their favorite cryptid. <gasps> oh, well, Christine, just say it immediately. I feel like I know what yours is. What? But I think you told us or you said it at the Colts. Book. Oh, probably. <laughs> what did I say? What's wrong with me? <laughs> but My name you is Jeff. Ju- yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeff, Jeff. The, Jeff the Mongoose. I love Jeff the Mongoose. Yeah. I think like my real answer is Mothman, but I also love Jeff the Mongoose. Yeah. Uh, and is that which Mothman's one were you great. thinking I was going to say? I think you were going to say Mothman, but I was yeah. going to say Jeff the Mongoose. And so oh, that ended perfect. up being both of ours. <laughs> okay, good. And Jeff the Mongoose is a, a Gemini. So I feel like we just like oh. connect, you know, yeah. with him. So it just kind of. Yeah. Really what about the two poll. of you? We did a poll. Well, aliens are mine, but we did a poll Bigfoot. with our listeners and Mothman won. Like really beat everything. Yeah. It was it was we like, actually who would you want to go on a romantic date with? And everyone Oh, people was like, are like weirdly Mothman. sexual yeah. about Mothman. Everyone's like super I didn't sexually do that. attracted to Mothman. I just thought he was cool and then everyone was like isn't he sexy? He's hot. And I was like, I don't think that's what I said. I don't so know. I really <laughs> just the abs. It's like got an eight pack, but then the rest is like insect a mob, bug like <laughs> yeah and it's like yeah washboard like abs mm-hmm. they're tapping into the psyche of something i don't want to know what that is i i don't want to totally well i am going to ruin it for christine right now but i have a, a topic and i've already done notes for it for when june comes around for pride mm-hmm. month mm-hmm. um and it's people have actually done i'm hoping you'll just forget by that time christine i will um, no i will uh it's like a bunch of sociologists have done research on why cryptids ha- are like sexualized, especially like in the what? queer community and not sexualized in a way that like, like how like Mothman is hot. Like how like, we all would want to be or on a romantic date with Mothman. I joke about you know Bigfoot I mean? and we literally have a shirt your that says Bigfoot is my boyfriend. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you're going to tell there's... Christine what's wrong Christine. with me uh-huh. in the month yeah. of June. We will armchair <laughs> yeah. psychoanalyze you yeah. to, and we'll but, let you know. There's a there's actually so many if you wanted I'm saying I'm doing it in June so if you wanted to beat me to the punch you can have the topic but it's it's definitely <laughs> no, worth reading yours. about there's so many um there's so many articles about like why so the queer community has taken in cryptids especially Mothman and wow. uh it's I'm very interesting to hear that yeah I, know, that so, would be I am too I'm excited so to be surprised by it for the first time and not yeah. know it's coming yeah. <laughs> I think so yeah. <laughs> Well, that's something exciting for people to look forward to. Is there anything else that you have coming up or oh, where people can buy your book? Plug yourself. Talk we, about uh, yourself more. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, okay. talk about ourselves more. Oh, if, if we that's must. Why we, that's um, why we invited you. Come on. <laughs> oh, wow. Pitch yourself. That's why we're first all of podcasters. All, first of all, thank you for even inviting us. That's very sweet. <laughs> it's an I, honor. Um, well, we have so much fun with you guys. I, well, hopefully we can all like actually do this 24-hour live stream thing that sounds yeah. way fun yeah um we're working our on book we, you you can get our book uh and we we say you can get our book in most bookstores but we uh highly suggest going we to mom and pop shops and small bookstores book all yeah. that good stuff Appreciate um that, yeah and then uh, we've got our tour that we still we have shows through May right now but I know we have eventually fall dates coming out so um I guess look out to see if we're in your city and then uh, we're not saying where or anything yet, but I will say for our third tour coming up, we have a future ghost hunt coming soon and we're looking forward to all the prep work that will go into that, yeah. but we've got the, the next few months as we're pre- preparing for it. So And you can find Fun. everything at and that's why we drink.com and you can mm-hmm. listen to our show anywhere you listen to this beautiful podcast. And uh, we're at ATWWD podcast on socials. Mm-hmm. Hooray! Thank you both Hooray. for joining us. This, this was is, so fun. I feel like I just want to have a slumber party and talk about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm we can. I'm bringing in October when we go to Salem. Can we really? <laughs> I've never been. 
you even have, I lived in so Boston. It's so fun. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Yeah, we, what the heck? Okay. Yeah, let's actually go. Okay, I mean, I know all the spots. I go plenty of times. I was going to say, you probably are be like, but <laughs> you know what I was trying to say. I, I understood it perfectly fine. Um, yeah, you'll be the English. tour guide. I'm slipping through to the bottom of the matrix, really. <laughs> oh, no. Is the ladder, do you still have your ladder to get out? I hope so. <laughs> also, if you see that oh, bird again, Sabrina, please tell me because I'm picture. really intrigued yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared of it, but I will definitely uh, let you, you know. I imagine I'll take a picture and then I go to send it to you and my whole phone is It'll like, like not working. There will so be a man in the phone. background with a briefcase and you'll be like, ah! Floating on the second story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I feel like we usually say, see you on the other side. But Em, I want to adopt your goodbye and just say goodbye, oh. goodbye. Goodbye, oh, goodbye, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, 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 goodbye. Oh, oh, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Bye. 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 I love you, but stay Bye. far away. <laughs> no teeth, please.